Hi, and welcome to another edition of Interviews with Hunting Masters brought to you by the OutdoorInsiders.com, your number one spot for inside information and quality gear. Today, we're talking uh, with a buddy of mine, uh, Ryan Carter from uh, DC Outfitters in Utah. And Ryan is a big bull freak. Um, and he's, uh, you know, pretty much only hunts trophy bulls. I mean, that's like, that's your thing. You're like, a, well, not you, but as, a, as an outfitter, you only yeah. pretty much pursue trophy bull, right? And, oh, yeah, and, uh, for sure. So, and you and you pretty much do just the limited entry units. Do you do, you do guide any of the uh, general stuff or no? No, it, they don't have the age class I like to pursue. In fact, a lot of the limited entry units I don't, I don't even dive into because they've let the age class drop. Right. So some of the areas where I started guiding 15 years ago, they, I mean, they manage them for four, three to four year old bulls, and it's just not what I'm into chasing. So, right, I've switched my game up. Mm-hmm. Well, and basically that's why we have you on because uh, we've gotten plenty of questions. So we, we get questions all the time about elk hunting, but um, we've been piling up some questions on, you know, how do I get to that next level of uh, that next quality of bull? Um, you know, what are some of the things that the guys that are getting it done on these big bulls every year are doing? Um, we've definitely had a lot of experts on, you know, calling and and just elk hunting in general, but it takes a different type of person and a different type of dedication, uh, to get into what you're doing, you know? Um, yeah. So that's kind of why we have you on and, you know, why don't you give us a little rundown about yourself and then, uh, you know, we'll roll into some questions. All right. Well, I'm an out guy. That's about all I'm good at. I <laughs> like, I'm just an average guy. I run a, a property maintenance company. I have three daughters, a uh, bachelor's of marketing, um, I run a few social media accounts on the side, including help out with the uh, Total Archery Challenge event. Um, so I stay fairly busy, but I'm, you know, there's, there's nothing real special about me. <laughs> Except that you kill 400-inch bulls. Yeah, nothing yeah, special at all. Yeah, I do do all. that sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, you and I got a lot in common. Um, we're both, our other business, both in the service industry, we deal with management companies. Um I have two daughters. We're about the same age, and uh, I understand you're quite the uh, whitetail hunter. You like to whitetail hunt. Yeah, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm a good whitetail hunter. Like, actually, I'm. I'm not very good at all. I've killed a lot of 130 type bucks, but I love it. It's just different than how I grew up because I grew up hunting in the West and it's right. spot and stock and it's checking wind and doing everything else. Whereas whitetails. For me, it's just sitting in a tree, reading a book and, and hoping one of them screw up because ultimately <laughs> when you're tree stand hunting, that's all you do. You're waiting for them to screw up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's more of a chess game. You know, I think, um, I, I always equate it to, um, as Western hunting is more of like, a you know, a, a football game or a soccer match or something. And then, and, and. And whitetail's more of a chess game. It's more of a mind game than than a physical game, basically, is what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. It's learning patterns, figuring out behavior, um, you know, getting into the head of that of that buck and then and then, you know, like you said, getting into a spot where you hope he's gonna screw up and, and give you an opportunity. But uh well, you shouldn't be ashamed about shooting two hundred and thirty inch bucks, man. I mean, this guy's been hunting their whole lives in perfect whitetail country never never killed a pope and young buck so you're uh, oh yeah you're doing better than most believe me so. well I, in in all reality I, I look at whitetail hunting a lot like elk uh, i like to hunt the pre-rut I, I feel like they move more i i look for pinch points i look for rub lines which elk run the same way they kind of have their own rub lines they have their own pinch points um you know, it's just a matter of tree stand placement and wind. Mm-hmm. Here, the wind's a lot different, you know, especially at high elevation. You get a lot of swirling wind, and, you, you know, it's not as consistent of a pattern. Whereas when I go back east, I'm setting up tree stands mornings and evenings based on which wind pattern they got. Right. And so it's almost the same game for me, so it, it comes okay. I'm just – I wouldn't say I'm good at it, though. No. Well, don't knock yourself down, like I said, man. Guys yeah. out there wish they got 130 inch bucks. Um, so, 
I got a couple of questions that are not necessarily specific to killing big bulls to start off with, and then we'll kind of work our way in there. Um, Cause I get this all the time. A lot of guys don't have the time to go out and scout like, like you do, or, you know, I mean, they just don't have the time. You know, they get one week vacation a year to go hunt elk and that that's what they got. So, Mm-hmm. Um, if they get up once or twice for a day or whatever to scout, that's about all they got. Wh- you know, what are some of the things that you do if you don't have the time to scout? How do you like to hunt? You know, what's your what's your take on it, or what what's what would you suggest a guy do? Because you don't necessarily do that because you got time. But well, in, in all reality, I'm I'm the same way. You know, I I only get three to four weeks that I use for vacation a year. Um, the reason I'm successful where I'm at is that I I've ran those same areas for years. You know, it's just, it's been a yearly thing, like setting up the cameras, going down, checking them, trying to find a few like killer spots and a few hit list bulls. And it just takes four or five weekends a year. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say that I'm any different than most of those guys, other than I've been hunting the same kind of units for 15 plus years. So um, but when, when I do hunt new country, like mm-hmm. I'm in the same ship, they are my only difference is like, you know, right now I have like 15 or 16 deer points in Utah. So I, I know I'm focusing on the Henry mountains. I, I'll have that archery tag in the next maybe four to five years, but what's going to happen is, you know, I'm already running cameras there. I'm trying to figure out like what my good archery spots are. And that's how you do it with these limited entry units that you wait forever on is you, you don't wait till you draw the tag. Right. You start scouting early, trying to figure out, you know, where you want to hunt based, not, not who you want to hunt, but where. So I, I think that helps, you know, but I mean, there's a, there's a slew of resources out there. It's, social media is huge. You know, if, if, if you drew a tag, you just weren't expecting it, it's just a matter of talking to the right people. And a lot of guys want to talk. Right. And so it, it's finding the right leads and checking out the right areas. And I, I think you can do it on most any, any limited entry unit and do fairly well. Right. No, that's, that's a good point. This, you know, if you're playing the point game, if you're playing the tag game, um, in these, in these units that, um, you know, require, um, you know, 10 points or nine points and, and you don't have typically a lot of time every year, but if you put in a day or two, you know, every season or, you know, go set up a trail camera and go back and look like you were saying, just put some time and effort knowing that you're eventually going to hunt there. Uh, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Um, I've actually never thought of doing it like that because I don't know, I'm always, uh, living in the here and now. I'm very, very rarely planning on where I'm going to hunt, uh, you know, plus I'm always trying to get, you know, when I had with the TV show and stuff, I, I had to maximize how many tags I had every year, you know, the opportunity. So I always put in for stuff that I'm going to draw. I don't think about, oh, trophy quality or whatever. I, in my head, I'm like, there's a trophy something in, or there's something that I want to shoot in every unit, you know? Um, yeah. So I, my, my whole strategy has always been, um, what can I draw in a couple of years, you know, uh, so that I constantly have tags. Everybody's like, Oh, how do you get so many tags? How do you get so many? Cause I don't put in for, you know, these units that take 10, 15 years to draw. I do here and there. Like now I just draw, I drew Utah. Um, you know, I didn't get the greatest unit in the whole world, but it's a decent unit. And, uh, it took me whatever, 10 years or so to draw it. But, um, mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite units. The the one you drew this year, you're going to have a lot of fun. That's a, that's one of my favorite spots. So it'd be a great hunt and 10 years, a long time. So I I think you're smart because you're not over the 12 point point creep for San Juan or Boulder. Um, If, if I was at that point, same place as you, that's the tag I would have took was the one you drew. So it is, you know, you're in a good place to be. Yeah. No, I, I'm excited about it. And, and the fact that I've been there once already now, or actually twice technically, because I hunted the other side of it many, many years ago uh, when I shot my first uh, Utah buck. Um, you know, the fact that I was in there last year hunting deer was was 
you know, it's comforting that I know, I know the area a little bit, you know, and I've seen, I saw elk, saw a lot of elk actually. So mm-hmm. that's kind of actually, that's kind of what made me put in for that unit, to be honest with you. Um, so, and, uh, I was like, yeah, I might as well try this. At least I know the unit a little bit. I don't want to go completely blind, you know? So, yeah, for sure. Um, so let's talk, let's get a little more in depth here. You, you started talking about if you're going to go check out a new unit, say, you know, there's an up and coming unit that you haven't really been hunting, but it's a good limited and you're, you're hearing some good bulls coming out of here. What, what do you do to look at that unit to, as your starting point before you go start putting some boots on the ground? What are some of the things that you're looking for? Um, I always start by word of mouth. Okay. Um, I look at the guys who's been successful there in the past. I, I look at some of the local guys I'll fish around for, uh, a few guys that I, I know hunt that unit constantly. And, and in all reality, I start with a lot of shed hunters because I know a lot of them. And so okay, and for elk in particular, um, archery is a little different, but as the rifle hunt kicks in, they, Utah kind of has a good old boy system where our rifle hunters get the best dates. You know, we're sitting mm-hmm. at that late September, the 20th type right. elk hunt when it's just money if you're a rut hunter. So, and, and what happens with elk during the rut is as the rut progresses, the, the big bulls pull their cows into areas where there's not as many other bulls. They try to find a hole. And so typically that's where they shed their horns. So like if I, if I'm hunting a rut hunt, I'll start talking to shed hunters, see where they're picking up sheds, kind of talk about which way to run from there. And then talk to people who've been successful in the past. Word of mouth is always the best. Mm-hmm. Um, I use like Onyx maps a lot. I spend time on Google Earth. I, I look for transition zones. I look for feeding areas. Um, elk and mule deer kind of have to have a trifecta in places where they hang out. There's There's got to be feed, there's got to be water, and there's got to be bedding ground. Elk like benches. Um, in the summer, they like acorns. Uh, during the rut, I, I, I look for grassy areas and aspens. Um, if you can find that trifecta, you do a lot better. Um, where I guide, there's a ton of water. So it's not like hunting Arizona. I can't just set up on a station and know they're coming. Right. Um, so, so I don't necessarily hunt water, but I hunt pinch points and I hunt those transition spots where elk will move from, you know, the, like I have a camera in the Ponderosas where I know the elk pull out of the acorns and run right into the Ponderosas for bedding down. Okay. I mean, that's a money spot. And, it, you know, a couple of my north facing benches, those cameras produce big bulls every year. I've killed a few of them off them. Okay. So, I mean, those are just a few things. Oh, and I mean, trail cameras is my game, right? I, for yeah. if, if you don't know, I mean, I, I run right. a fleet of them. That's, no, that's I how I, I find bulls. It's like 50 to 100 of them, right? Or something like that. Like 70 cameras out at one time. Or, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. and a lot of them just sit. I don't get to them every year. Mm-hmm. But um, what I well, I put enough out that I can. So what I do, I, I don't have glassing areas where mm-hmm. I hunt. It's it's a plateau. It's um, it's just a little different. You know, that if you're hunting like the Manti or the San Juan, you get on a point, you, you're glassing up herds and finding the right bull. Where right. I'm at, it's flat. It's It's kind of like hunting some areas of Arizona and what I have to do is position all my cameras and, and find it, locate a few good bulls. And then what I do is once I find them, I shotgun the area with more cameras Got so it. that I can find their rotation. If, if I can pattern them like preseason, the best time in my mind to kill a trophy bull is during the archery hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you can pattern them just like a mule deer does. Their, their area is a little bigger Mm-hmm. You know, they'll run certain areas that take three to eight days to do the full rotation, but they still have a rotation just like a mule deer does. And, and if I can find their rotation and find an area that they're consistently hitting, then they're killable. Uh, whereas the, when the rut kicks in, they're all over the place. Right. It's, you know, as far as trophy hunting goes, I, I don't necessarily like the rut. Right. It's hard. I, I'd rather go hunt New Mexico where I get a tag every other year and shoot a 330 bull while they're screaming. Mm-hmm. You get a tag so every other year in New Mexico. Gotta tell well, me which unit that is. is. 
Yeah. <laughs> it took me 10 years to draw my first one and I haven't drawn one since. <laughs> it's oh. been over 10 years. Oh, yeah, man. well, it's been five for me. So, yeah, that's right. But they're but, used no, to draw you. a few of those units every the year. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. There is there is a few units that you can. Um, so let's talk about this rotation a little bit. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that and kind of paint a picture for for us that like what what that really consists of or what what an elk is actually doing? Well, I I just don't think you know it's not like they find one meadow and they sit there all summer. You know they 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 constantly move. Elk are nomadic, like it from where the end and then it's all about food in in reality elk you know one day they're down in the acorns the next day they're up in the aspens mm-hmm. um i depending on the month you know july and august for me i i really focus on oak brush i, I score big on oak brush um okay. and and they do they it's usually maybe an eight mile difference and it takes them three to eight days to move it but once they once you can figure out where that's at, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's not, it's not like it's consistent. Like they'll hit this camera this day and this one, and then this one and this one, it's not a round circle. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they cut that in half and sometimes they go the opposite direction. Depending on the wind. This, right. And I find the spot that they're most consistently hitting like this camera, he's hitting every five days. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put a tree stand on that tree where there's a pinch point where he has to walk through to get to that wallow or to that kid to that creek. And that's the, my most, you know, my odds are the highest. It's just mm-hmm. like with anything, you're playing an odds game, putting in for a tag, you're playing odds when you're hanging a tree stand. Right. So well, that's, 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 that's like whitetail hunting right there. I mean, yeah. basically you, that's why you've killed 130 inch whitetails because you you're doing it with the elk right there. I mean, that's pretty much the same thing. It's figuring out, figuring out their loop. Whitetail have loops. Mule deer have loops. I mean, the only animal that I haven't really noticed that has a loop is probably a pronghorn. Uh, but even yeah. them, even them, they seem to have like a, you know, they like a certain spot with a certain type of conditions. And I don't, I haven't really figured out what that is because you don't, don't have to usually because you, you're able to class them up from far, you know, distances and stuff. But, you yeah. know, all the, all the branch antlered animals seem to, you know, have this kind of, you know, uh, patternable, you know, like you said, a loop. I, I've only, only heard it called a loop with elk. Um, until recently in the last couple of years, I've heard, you know, uh, referred to with a loop on, on mule deer and a loop on, on, on whitetail. But, um, I, in my experience that I've seen, elk seem to be – now, this is contrary to what you just said. They seem to be a little bit more circular, like have this kind of like, you know, they're here mm-hmm. and then they're here and then they're here and then they're here. And it was pretty consistent. When I first noticed it, I don't know, it was probably in – I think in Washington. Uh, I was hunting Rosie's and um, I really, I really noticed it there. I was like – Dude, every three days, this, this bull's over here, you know, and, and over here, every couple of days, there's this group of elk is right there, you know, and it was like, oh, okay. But, um, yeah, no, that's... But, uh, I, but I only notice it pre-season right. or post-season, you know, the winter time's the same way, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, anytime there's, there's it's pre-rut, rut, mm-hmm. or even kind of a post-rut, it's just sporadic. It, but mm. it, when they're in their normal, like routines just like us you know get up you brush your teeth you go to the gym you do your thing i think they kind of do their same thing yeah yeah well you know i i feel what 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 i do different or what i what i change up is i stop looking for the bulls patterns and i go back to looking at cow or you know doe patterns or whatever for the rut because they're gonna try Mm -hmm. they're gonna try to stay on there i mean Bulls a little different. They're they're pretty good about rounding them up and getting them to go where they he, where he wants them to go. But those bulls are going to be where the cows are at. Those do, those bucks are going to be where the does are at, and yep. it, they try to stay on their pattern. So you know if you're if you're hunting the rut, I think your your focus should be, and you're not trying to single out a specific bull. I guess that's the that's the key. Where in your case, that's what you guys are doing. You guys are looking. You got you know your hit list, like you said. Um, mm-hmm. 
but if you're just looking for a you know to score a bull or a good good bull or whatever just you know figure out what the cows are doing and then you can you'll find them in the rut pretty much well uh, exactly what you said i i get a lot of uh messages uh midsummer about guys frustrated like hey i'm not getting any bulls on my camera like cows like crazy cows and calves are rolling through and rag bulls but i'm not getting any like bulls i want to hunt right and if they're hunting a rut hunt they have a rifle tag i tell them be, you're fine leave it there yeah. like be patient because the bulls will come to you a lot of my bulls um i track them 30 something miles between september 1st and Oof. october 1st they move a long ways just to get cows oh yeah and so like I tell guys not to get frustrated. The, the, if the bulls come, stay with your cows if you're hunting the rut. Mm -hmm. if, if you're archery hunting early like what I do, they, yeah, move. Try to try to get in an area where the bulls are kind of bastard up. Yeah. No, it makes perfect sense. Um, so you started talking a little bit about like landscape features and stuff. Um, what what specifically are you, are you looking for to hang those those cameras that you got going? Well, it, you know, so as far as cameras go, if, if we're looking at cameras, um, I, I, I hit it fairly early and I hit it. So my, like my main time to get pictures is right now. It starts June 20th to August 20th. So that's why I start mid-May hanging cameras like crazy. Cause I, you know, I, I think I wanted to get up 70. My goal was 73 this year and I'm done. And I only got up 57. <laughs> so I'm a little short, but my main ones are up. The, uh, but I had to have them all in by June 20th because now they're rolling. The bulls are out more. I get more daytime pictures. August 20th, it shuts off. And not completely, especially if you got cameras like on wallows or spots they're rolling through or where cows are. But 90% of my content pictures all come in the next two months. Mm -hmm. um, so when I'm looking at that, I know, okay, it's... I'm focusing on June and August. It's hot. So I'm putting them on north faces. I'm putting them on benches. Um, I do use a lot of water. So if I'm looking on Google Earth, I, I, you know, I'll pan over and look for a green spot that, that just stands out a little bit. You know, I, one of my best spots, in fact, where I killed Donna's bull last year, mm -hmm. um, it's way down in the desert. I mean, we got up at three in the morning to hike out there. Jeez. But the uh, the way I found that spot is I was on Google, and I'm I'm cruising through all the PJs, you right? Know, the opinion of junipers and and looking what's out there, and I find this stand of aspens, okay. just out in the middle of nowhere. And wow, <laughs> sure enough, when I hiked out there, there's a seep that's just little tiny. I mean, there's nothing coming out of it, but for four or five feet. But they help cruise out there, and they go back. So the second her bull showed up. That on second day of the hunt, I, I knew right where he was going. It was just a matter of cutting him off. Right. And so if you can find those features, whether you're out in the desert or you're up high in the mountains, you know, look for a meadow that has a really super green, dense middle. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a that's a water spot. Now, they're not always the best spots for cameras. but Because no. elk, don't, elk don't wallow in the summer, right? But mm -hmm. they cruise through there. So if you can find a pinch point by those wallows, I put a camera on every time. Does that make sense? Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I and I don't know if it makes sense to me because because of whitetail hunting. Um, I think that's that's why I get it more. To be honest with you, people mm -hmm. people discount the whitetail hunting uh, in in Western game all the time. I get it all the time, but. Um, it's that, it's that mentality that I think that you bring into the table. That's the, the you know, the reason why you're so, so successful. I mean, I don't think I know it's the reason why you're so successful. So, um, now you got a bull that's showing up on, on one camera. You talked a little bit about shotgun in an area. So, I don't know. Walk me through a scenario. You got one showing up at one of these little seeps, or uh, it's, it's he's passing by a pinch point that's going out to a meadow. Mm -hmm. How do you um, move out from there to go to go find to go find where you're going to put it? Obviously, I mean you're seeing things too that make you. But I don't know. Right. Try to try to paint a picture for us. Well, for years I was boots on the ground, so 
So once right. I got that picture, then I'm diving off that ridge and I'm, I'm going to the nearest creek bottom and I, I just work it all looking for flat spots and looking for water just to kind of see like where he's hitting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and seriously, up till like four years ago, that's all I did. It was a ton of miles. Um, the last couple of years I've been able to go, okay, he hit me here. I got on Google. Well, there's a bench up here and there's a, it looks like a wallow up here and there's a big burn right here. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll focus on trying to tack down within a two or three mile radius where he's crossing. And it's okay. not, there's no science to it. In fact, elk hunting, I mean, it's all luck in, in the end. Like it's 60% work and 40% luck every time for me. And so, you know, I just start blasting it with well, cameras. Well, you're a lucky SOB I, then, man. I, I get lucky, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some, yeah. <laughs> somebody's eating their lucky charms. <laughs> No. Oh, that's cool, man. Um, I uh, I'm tempted to pull up Google Earth right now and and kind of have you walk us through something. Um, although I tried this yesterday with Remy Warren and we had it was kind of like a little bit of an epic fail here, but I think I'm gonna try it again. Let let me see if that works. Um, all right, let's do it. I, I don't want to let's pick a unit that you don't hunt. So okay. we're not we're not giving away any of your spots, but um, that way uh, I don't want to mess up your hunting here. Although I'm sure it'd be easier for you to tell tell me to look at this and look at that. Um, hmm. Will it just pop up on the screen here, or how's that? Yeah, work? it will in a second. I gotta find. I gotta. Right. I'm, I'm uploading uh, Google Earth right now. Um, Give me a give me a town to search in Utah that's next to a unit that you don't hunt. That I that I don't hunt at all, or ah, uh, uh, that you probably don't hunt anymore, or that you used to hunt, or whatever. I don't know something. So let's, let's do like let's do the Nebo unit. Do the okay. the Nebo is like there's no roads on that unit, so it's kind of a okay. That might be a good one to do. All right. So Nebo. So. Uh, What's the closest town? Nebo? Pa Payson or okay. Nephi? Payson. One of the two. Oh, Nephi, yeah. yeah. Nephi, mm -hmm. yeah. I've driven through Nephi. Okay. All right. Okay. Good deal. All right, I'm going to pull that up now. Let's see. We're going to make a couple of guys who, who just uh, drew the Nephi. Or excuse me, that drew the Nebo. Nebo are going to be real yeah. happy with you. It, it's actually, you know, I, I used to guide it. It's been about 15 years. Um, I, I, that's where I started guiding. I, I, it's actually turning around to be a decent unit. It just, you know, got a little. Okay, it's going to be a little bit hard. So there's ne Nephi right there. Let's All see. Right. Where's it? Oh, there's the town. Okay. Yep. I got you. Um, so I'm just going to drop you right here in the center of the mountains. <laughs> okay. Let's say, um, in this bowl right here in the bottom right here, you found the, well, I don't know. Maybe we can find something. Hmm. It's kind Dude, of I love idea. Google. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, it might be water right there. Actually. Oh no, it's not. Okay. So these are all the north faces here. Right. Like you drew right to a cut. Yeah. You know, and so one thing about elk, it, it doesn't matter if you're in New Mexico, California, wherever you are, elk, elk run the same pattern. And right. What elk, what elk do is they go down in the mornings or down at night and up in the evenings or in the mornings. So they bent, they bet on high benches a lot, really high. And then right. they travel down and they're in the dark stuff in the mornings. So if you can find places where they're traveling down to, like the right. cut you had just pointed in on a second ago, That's is a perfect morning spot. Yeah, I was looking at that. I was kind of hoping I could find something that had a little bit of whatever. But like even even this one right here, it's like looks like they would come down. That's not as steep though. Although this got this bull going on right here. And there's some open grass that they come feed in. Yeah. Um, 
but not well, it's not see, as good. Like I think and that's almost a perfect spot because if you look right at here. it, the, the one side of the ridge, you have oak brush. Mm -hmm. The other side is all pines, and you can see a bench right there off the peak. Right. Uh, where's right your here. mouse at? I'm trying to see your mouse. It's yeah. uh, I know because you're yeah where my so hands at. There's a bench yeah. right here, and this looks yep. like all oak brush and feeding right here on this slope, which would be this the sunny slope, which I could see mm -hmm. that you know on a cold morning them feeding here, but you know if it's super hot, and like you said, yep. as soon as it starts sun and comes then they're up, gonna they move up. up. And bed on that north side where there's pines and it's going right. to be a little cooler and so then like i would actually start in that saddle right and i would start looking for trails and i'd start looking for wallows to see if i can find migration spots but saddle right where you're at a little right. to your left right here but, yeah yep uh-huh yep. yeah the saddle right here and the cool thing yep. about this is the saddle connects to another complex that's very similar to this right here where they got mm -hmm some more feeding in here I and mean, it's not quite as thick on these little north faces right here but because it's kind of secluded mm -hmm. it looks like that might be something that where they would feed in here and then drop on you know pull up in here in the daytime to to bed up yeah and then right on the edge of your screen the left edge you just lost it oh right here unless and left less left is backwards for us right there yeah. where your mouse is kind of there in the middle of the pines yeah that would be a good pocket to be like get a close look at uh we lost it again it might be that on the bottom right but you know there's a big face of pines and then there's a little pocket right to the right there that white dots on it yeah that might be a good place to go look for a camera yeah. Because it's in the middle of a bedding area and it's just kind of a smooth transition spot. It's a bench, it looks like to me. Yeah, it's kind so, of like a it's like a swale, like a funnel. You know, it's definitely a natural mm -hmm. funnel here where they would definitely um, walk through. Yeah, and and you never know. You still got to get boots on the ground. Oh yeah. Like for sure, to, before you ever really figure it out, because that might just be a crappy spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you if you had a pointer from somebody you'd talk to that said, Hey, this bench always seems to have a lot of elk in here, like I'd for sure be running to check that out. Yeah, see that like this looks good except for the fact that there's a road right here on the top, but Well, that, that unit's really steep. Like really, yeah. really steep. The the roads on the top don't mean anything because once you drop off, if you get in those switchbacks on the bottom left, like, yep. it might be a killer spot in there. Um because it, it looks like a good transition zone. Aspen's on the one side, pine's on the north, and then over I, on that face on the one side looks like oak brush again. So that's got the three trifectas. The only thing you're missing is water. Right. And with that canopy, who knows if there's water in here. There might be a little, little something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually, this whole kind of – this whole system right here looks pretty good. Back um, in the day, right where you're at, that used to be a money spot. Like that was really good way back when, but I, I have no idea now. I've been down there in years and years. Yeah. See, like this down in here looks like there might be water down here. I don't know if there is or not, but mouse. hold on, let me change it up. Yeah, I could spend all day on Google. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a neat <laughs> tool. I remember when it first came out, nobody was using you know, nobody really used it for hunting. Nobody knew what the hell it was. Yeah. I mean, I've been using it for uh, 12 years already. So. Wow. Yeah, I definitely have been using it that long. Well, you used, used to have to pay for the like this view. It used to be yeah. Google Earth Pro or whatever. And yeah. I was paying for it. So. No, it's really what nice. About what about something like this where – you know, like you got the, you know, the oak, the oak brush and stuff like this on, and then that almost looks a little too dry. That, too like, dry, right? Almost like that's too hard of a south face. Like maybe, like that might be really good post rut, maybe even um, winter grounds, because it does look sunburned pretty bad. Yeah, so well, I think it's it's facing west, southwest, so it's pretty yeah. much in the sun all the time. But the north face doesn't look bad. Yeah. And, and like, I have no idea where you're at right now, but that's still. I don't know where I'm at either. I'm just kind of, yeah. I'm just kind of panning <laughs> around <laughs> somewhere above the, 
<laughs> Nephi. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and that's that's another thing I love about Onyx is it, you know, that base camp divides your units for you. If you're on oh, private, yeah. it tells you whose it is, and you can avoid staying, you know, keeping on the public land and staying out of the private. And that's such a cool tool. And I love that I can download the maps and look at it offline. Yeah, but you, we, I could actually pull that up on here too um, while we're talking, but it's it just takes a lot longer to download and harder uh, to find stuff yeah. at first. It's yeah. I think it's it's a it works better as an app than it does on on the uh, desktop. For, for a podcast. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. No, no, definitely for definitely that for, for, for a podcast, but yeah. Um, so I know it's hard for you to see it because you're looking at a phone. But uh -huh. so from this big aerial view like this being up this high, where would you where would you fly to? Because this is how most people are going to look at this from. Um, well, of you can you can easily start telling the north faces from the south faces. Right. So it, for me, it's a matter of looking for um, looking at those north faces and finding super green spots and start panning in on the really green ones. Mm -hmm. You know, and I see one middle left and I see one top left and then I, we look pretty dry through the right, but yeah, I don't know. Dude. And, I know, but, but it, you know, it's just picking spots and zooming in and trying to see, okay, I'm this far from the road and this spot looks super green. I probably need to get in there and check it out. Yeah. You know, and then a lot of times this, I'll chase this spot right here. Looks, to see this spot right in. here looks good for deer for me. Oh yeah. No, it looks money. That's like a especially deer where you got those these, you got those these snow cuts in there. I don't yeah, know. yeah, that looks like definitely looks like a deer spot for me. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's fun. Yeah, for sure. Do you use All it? Right, well, do you use it for whitetails much? Uh, I, I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Huh. Yeah. When uh, maybe when we get done here, I'll I'll show you a couple of things that I look for. I actually used to help guys out all the time. Um, it was part of a, I used to do um, consulting for like land management and stuff like that for whitetail. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I would just, guys would send me their coordinates of their property. I'd look at the, you know, I'd look at the uh, Google Earth and I'd be like, okay, set a camera here, set a camera here, set a camera here, set a camera here. Um, because that stuff that you're looking for in the elk woods is so much more obvious in, you know, farmland and hardwoods. In white I mean, country, yeah. Oh, it's just like, yeah. It, it's like it, there's there's signs and flares popping up, you know. Actually, one mm -hmm. of my buddies, um, I've, I've actually helped several guys. He was, you know, sending me pictures from his phone. And, you know, I was like, hey, where should I set my stand up? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, all right, well, just send me – you know, drop me a pin of where you're at. And I pulled up Google and I told him to sit here and he killed a 145 out of, out of that stand. Just, and I, I've never been to the place. Um, yeah. you know, it's just a matter of, uh, just, you know, knowing how deer use the, use the oh, terrain. Yeah. So, and, it, and they're all this, like, the, it's just what I was saying about elk. Like they like to travel down at night and up in the mornings and i mean white tails kind of have their same patterns mm -hmm. you know you look for the christmas trees you look for the pinch points and the creek bottoms you can figure it out pretty quick because they're i mean as much as everyone tries to tell you like oh that old buck's so smart dude he's mm -hmm. just got good instincts right that's all it is it's not like they're that smart i mean no. they outsmart me all the time but i'm not that smart either <laughs> well you know you gotta understand something how many days a year do you hunt? I don't know. Oh, maybe 30. I, I, hunt, I, hunt, I hunt almost 100, which is a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, the last couple of years, it's probably been about 80, 80 a bit average at about 80. So that deer is living that 365 days a year. He's avoiding danger. Yeah. He's avoiding predators. 300 you know and that elk is doing the same oh, yeah. thing i mean they're that they live it live it and breathe it 24 hours a day seven days a week we go home and mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you know hang out with our families and do whatever we're not thinking i mean some of us think about it all day long but he literally has to do it even in his sleep like everything he does is about surviving so yep. like yeah like you said smart maybe not smart but he's 
learned what Tra- keeps his ass safe. <laughs> you know, he's and trained. He's yeah, keep, he's trained. Yeah. So, right. but um, no, man, I think that's uh, there's a lot for people to take away from this from this episode and 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 really start thinking about what they're doing and how they're doing it. I I think you like myself, you're a behavioralist. You're kind of learning what they do and how they do it and why they do it. And then you can, once you do that, you could take that and apply that in Colorado. You could take that and apply, you could take it anywhere you mm-hmm. want to go. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, there's a, cause I know there's a lot of guys out there that are really, really good hunters, but they're only really, really good hunters where they hunt. And that's right. because they figure them out there. If you can figure well, out why they're doing what they're doing there and to take that and apply it everywhere else, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, well, that's, I, I that's think what that's it's all why, about. That's why I can say, like, elk is my game. I mean, I, I've killed a few mule deer. Like, I mean, I mean I've, yeah, I've killed a couple. Of a nice couple. ones back there. Well, they're not even nice. They're just okay. But, you know, I, I've hunted long enough to know, but the, the elk – I, I learned on units that I could glass and I could see their patterns and I could see their behaviors. And in fact, I learned about their rotations on the Dutton unit where mm-hmm. you can sit on a peak and glass, like, I mean, miles and miles. And I would figure out, okay, I spotted him here. And two days later I spotted him here. And then two days later he was here and then he disappeared. And on day five, he was back at the first spot. And that's when I started figuring out their rotations. Why? Like, on units that I can glass, I've just applied it on a unit that you can't glass. People don't kill a lot of big bulls, but because it's so hard of an area to hunt, the age class is bumped. So I've just figured out how to do it, but I learned it on other units because their behavior is mm-hmm. the same. Right. Right. Um, well, awesome, man. I uh, appreciate you uh, coming on and sharing your knowledge with us um where can uh the listeners find out more about you and uh your outfitter business um you know i do a lot of social media stuff i have a dc outfitters facebook page and my personal page ryan carter i, I mean i kind of hit and miss post on both mm-hmm. uh, instagram's ryan or dc outfitters twitter's the same i think i, I don't right. run a web page i i really only guide like two or three guys a year because i focus on quality over quantity right uh, I'm not interested in, in going full time with guiding. So I, I just do things a little different. I book out usually a year in advance. So like, I, you know, I don't need to market a whole lot. I just like to, right. Right. I, I just, yeah. I, I like what I do and I like posting my pictures and I, I think a lot of people like it. So yeah. I mean, your, fun. your Instagram page is killer. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's it, how we got to know each other really. I mean, yeah. started following you on Instagram and you started following me and we just did, you know, I was like, oh man, this guy's got always got great stuff going on. And so, it, yeah, yeah, with elk anyway, the rest of my stuff's par. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to change that, man. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, the, uh, the door is open. If you want to go whitetail hunting, I'd love to, love to take you just, uh, oh, I, I want to jump in cause I think I want to try spot and stalking one. That sounds interesting. Oh man, it's the best. Um, that- two years ago, two years ago was my, well, other than coos deer, cause I've, I've done it on coos deer, but, um, my first Midwest whitetail spot and stalk was in 2015. I was just like, oh, this was like the best thing ever. I don't, I don't ever want to get a tree stand again. <laughs> oh really? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> There's a lot of, you know, people don't realize how much you get to see and how much you get to like take in when you're sitting on in a tree stand and things are just walking by you don't have any clue that you're there that's where i mean that's how you learn behavior i mean uh-huh. you just sit there and watch so but no i well, and, i love and tree for stand me it, too. i i like the tree stand because I, I i i don't have to for for me personally i i get the buck fever where i don't get it on the ground i'm i'm, I'm too in my head when i'm on the ground because i'm like well i could do this and move this way or the wind's shifting i gotta hurry and go uh-huh. over here I've got to change my strategy constantly. I, I don't get the buck fever. It's it's like I range them, I kill them, it's done. Right. Um, but on whitetails, like you're tied to a tree. Yeah. Like they have to screw up. They have to take this line. They have to drop their head at this point. And you're like, oh, 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 here he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah, he's coming. <laughs> my heart's going out of my chest, and my buddies make fun of me because that's where my buck fever shows through. Because here I don't get it, not at all. Yeah, I always get it right after. I'm. Oh, yeah. I'm 
I'm like laser focused on the whatever it is that I'm doing, and uh-huh. like I lose it right after, man. Yeah. I, when I sh- I shot uh, Swamp Donkey last year in in um, in New York, I was like. I, I shot him and I was like, I was in disbelief. I, was like, mm. I just, I just shot him, especially cause I've been hunting that bastard for four freaking years. You yeah. Know? And I was like, I almost fell out of the damn tree stand. It was a good thing. I was tethered mm. in pretty tight cause I would have fallen right the hell out. I was sitting there talking to there. the camera and I'm like, you know, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, anyway. that's cool. Cool, man. Well, uh, I wish you luck this season. I'm sure, uh, we'll be in touch and, um, Oh, thanks, man. You know, I'll be uh, I'll be out in Utah in in, in August. So uh, if you're around, maybe I'll see you. Well, if if I can kill out early, which is my plan, I you know I I always like to try to get them done in that first week. I yeah. might come up on the Manti for a day. I, oh, I told you, I, I, love, I that. love that unit. I love that unit. I love that for sure. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. You well, bet, man. Cool. Um. I guess uh, we'll we'll talk to you next time. All right, thanks, John. Bye.